look at one more program where we are going to use functions to find the sum of the series given as 1 plus x is to 1 divided by 1 factorial plus x is to 2 divided by 2 factorial plus x is to 3 divided by 3 factorial and so on till x is to n divided by n factorial. Now, how this particular program differs with the one which we have studied in the previous videos? In all those previous sessions, we have seen that the function was or used for only once or the definition or the entire program contained only one function. If all the examples have described that, it doesn't mean that every program should contain only one function. No, not necessarily. A program can contain multiple functions. How do I try a program using multiple functions? Now, this program will help us to understand that a program can be developed using multiple functions also. And that's what in real life applications we need. So here, let's first discuss out what is the input which is required for this particular task. I need the input that is x. So the input which is required is the value of x and the number of terms for this particular code. The number of terms are n terms. So I need the input as x and n from the user. Once x and n are given, then I am supposed to find x is to 1, x is to 2, x is to 3, x is to 4, x is to 5 and so on. Even 1, the first term can be expressed as powers. Don't you feel that this one can be written as x is to 0 divided by 0 factorial? x is to 0 is 1 and 1 factorial is 1. So ultimately, this term can also be reduced as x is to 0 divided by what? 0 factorial. So, how do I do it using functions? So here, what I'll do is, I'll take a numerator as a nr. And this numerator, what I'll do is, I'll find the value of x as common at the base comma the varying terms. In the previous sessions, I have said that whenever a sum series is given, you can reduce this particular sum series to some generalized terms. Don't you feel that this numerator has got the base as constant that x, the term 1, 2, 3, 4, the power is varying. So can I say this as x is to i? Because 1 can also be written as x is to 0 divided by 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 4 factorial till n factorial. So divide by this 1 can also be written as 0 factorial. Can I say the factorial of i? And this is supposed to be added. So summation of i from 0 to n. So the summation will always hint towards the use of a for loop. So I'll say this summation is nothing but a for loop and this x is to i is now stored as nr and this i factorial is stored as dr. And this nr by dr is regularly added with say s. Right? So your nr is power is what? Base is x and power is i. Your dr has got factorial of say i. So I have called a function called as power, I have called a function called as fact. But these two concepts are supposed to be called only once or for different values of i. It has to be for different values of i. Hence, this has to be enclosed within a for loop for where this particular i goes from, i goes from 0, i less than equals to n, i plus plus. What are the value of nr and dr are given? So divide this nr by dr. And then you don't just do the division operation, it has to be added simultaneously. Added simultaneously. So what I'll do is I'll say s equals to s plus by setting s as initial what? 0. So here, this 0, if it is added with the first part, it doesn't make any difference. So 0 plus nr by dr. Regularly, it has to be done for different values. Once it is done, then I can go for writing this particular function. right? So now, let's try and put this particular function. So here, I have these two functions. I have used the header file declaration, then the main function. The inputs which are required are x and n. The term i indicates a variable for this particular for loop. So enter the values of x and n, where x indicates the base and n indicates the number of terms. Read that value x and n. Since I said that we are going to start i from 0, let's set i as 0, go till n. And within this, we'll have these values. As I described, nr is a power x comma i, where this power goes to this particular function power x is copied onto x, i is copied onto y. This function, we have discussed in the previous videos, how this particular power function works. 
and this will return the value r to this particular n. After that, call a function under dr, fact of i, go to this particular function fact, evaluate this particular function, return r, this will store into dr. And then divide nr by dr. Since I have taken nr as a long integer value, dr also has a long integer value. A long integer by long integer tend to re always return an integer value. But the sum seems to be a fraction value. To get an appropriate value, what I'll do is I'll do a type casting. So type cast this nr to float, divide that particular float value to long int, and then the resultant value is float itself. Keep on adding that with s, and s is initialized to 0. And finally, we'll display the sum at this particular place. Since the program uses two functions, I'm supposed to have the declarations of these two functions. So, how do I put the declaration of these functions? The first function is long int. The function is fact. It accepts an integer value. I'll say int and a semicolon. Similarly, I'll say long int and then power and here int comma int at this place. So, we can have this function added with these values. So, I can have this function written with int comma int because both are going to accept integer values. So we have implemented a program using multiple functions. Now don't argue that since I have called power function, I have to do the declaration of power first. I have called, I have written fact first, hence I am not doing fact first. You can write the declaration in any random order irrespective of the definitions how they appear. So this program helps us to identify that a program can be written using multiple functions or a single function as per the needs of the application. Thank you.